we're on to item 14, which is tree, the tree strategy, and that's on page 195. And Alistair, I think it's yours yeah. again, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's, there's been extensive consultation uh, to get to this point, um, and since it's a considerable good, really good feedback, lots of information. Um, the consultation has asked us to create a vision, uh, to define some priorities and policies, continue to treat the plant, to provide opportunities to engage with communities and with individuals. The strategy achieved this in three parts, um, two of which we are considering today. The third part, which is the action plan, will be developed if the report and recommendations are approved. The formal strategic direction of the, of the, of the Council's tree has been absent since 2007 when the last strategy expired. So this strategy is intended to confirm the Council's commitments to trees, with a wide range of objectives around improving, maximising, protecting and enhancing, and therefore offer the recommendations to Section 2 for your consideration. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions? That's really um, I have a few questions. Um, I'm pleased to see, actually, number one is I'm pleased to see, it's over four points in the I was pleased to see reference later in the report to the role that trees can play in uh, the city's challenge of tackling air quality and noise pollution. Um, you know, I don't know how flexible this strategy is going to be, but I, would have, I think that given the current um, concerns over that that have already come to the forefront, I think it would be good to bring that to the forefront of the strategy, because you do really have to sort of read through to the sort of quite small, so I'm using this quite small print much later on in the agenda. And I personally would like to see that really recognised up front, um, you know, not so great, for example, you talk about climate change and, and things like that, because I think trees do play an important role in the Please do stuff from the internet, and probably don't want to hear all that now about the importance of trees. Um, secondly, I was very pleased to see, I think it's E3, it's quite hard to read these small print things. Um, about the planting strategies and um, the, the target that you've set. I'm afraid I can see you might be able to help me isolate where it is, but the... Um, the part one. It's in part one, yeah. I'm not sure where, how we need to sort of make sure that happens. And um, I, th I think we will need a follow-up sort of action plan to make sure that we actually do in fact increase the planting and the canopy across the city. So that was my sort of next question and you know, how much money we've put to, I think we, you know, there's been some money on tree planting, you know, the money, the sites and so on and so forth, especially bear in mind that reasonably air quality point I raised earlier. Um, the fourth point is the I am quite right, thank you. Um, is that I am sort of anxious about the change in the consultation strategy away from uh, sending letters to people. And I, obviously, I have no understanding of how widespread you consulted. Um, I think the, um, it now says you'll go to the owner of an adjacent and a nearby tree. Um, although I was slightly concerned of saying this is in a tree is, and the person next door doesn't have a tree in their garden and they won't get a conservation letter. And the way it's drafted it appears to try and consult the kind of people who might be very immediately affected. But I'm not sure that does that very successfully because um, if you don't have a tree next door, you'll, you'll miss it and somebody down the road will get a conservation letter and you may never know about it. So I, I would look at that again. And I think also, I think that um, you know, you're relying on, on Officers making judgments about what's in the significant public interest, and you know the best one of them are a great team of officers, but they they may not always really understand what's it's a quite a subjective judgment, and I think that's uh, in my experience in the council that can um, you know may cause you more problems than uh, than then the last thing I just wanted to talk about in part two, which was the um, 
the way in which ward councillors were, sorry, you have this page 263. Um, the ward, I'd like to just talk about the ward councillor role in um, tree works on city council land. That, that um, I think the, the original knows that ward councillors are asked about it right up front. You know, now you may be incredibly deciduous ward councillors and put me to shame, but you know, I get dozens of tree sort of notifications of one sort or another, and I don't go around the ward and look at every single one. So um, I do look at ones I think might be sensitive, but I can't be. And, and my worry is that we often, is at the point where an, this is an objection and it has to be decided by a relative executive councillor. At that point, all the councillors are not consulted. But a person had actually received some consultation from all the councillors um, at that point before the executive, so that we could so that we can see the objections, understand the issues, and advise the executive councillor. So that last one was really about decision. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Lee. Um, Councillor Lee, please do. Sorry, I'm just trying to put all those together. Um, I'm going to ask Abbott to respond on both the pollution areas and the action plan for the canopy um, extension. Um, in terms of the consultation, I do take your point about um, uh, how neighbouring is neighbouring when it comes to sending out letters. And then there's a part of the thrust behind this was though, this, the, the kind of slightly bizarre situation where we find ourselves chopping down loads of trees and we'll send out letters about <coughs> works on trees, which seems a, a, a little kind of um, odd to say the least. But it's, it's, not, it's not a matter of trying to exclude people or anything else. And perhaps you know, we do need to look at that and, and look at the way that we can make sure that people are aware. Um, and one of the, 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 the areas outlined, both in the kind of public scrutiny area, um, is that is not just to send it out to councils, but possibly, I think, judging from what you said in your fourth point, that one of the things that we might want to do is actually flag up when we're sending ground things. It's not just proposed tree works, because as you say, that tends to be a very dense email, doesn't it? But to actually distinguish between proposed tree works, areas where we're actually doing public scrutiny and areas where it's an open consultation so that the importance uh, and relevance of those is flagged up to councillors at an early stage, which is a way of getting it out to people as well um, who might otherwise have missed it. Um, the, I think the, the part of the issue with sending letters is, is a the resource involved and secondly, you know, the, the fact of chopping down trees to do it. Um, and I think uh, in terms of the ward councillor point that you make in point four, I think so there's two very good ones, and I think number one, from um, uh, an officer and from uh, an executive council perspective, we would be going for a very generous interpretation of what public interest is there, um, in terms of we don't want to avoid consultation or scrutiny on tree issues. It's not something that we would want people to miss and to feel that they haven't had a chance to um, have their say on. So that's something that we want to interpret very, ge very generously, and it might be worth us thinking about how we word it in such a way as to make that very clear in the policy and strategy itself. Uh, and I also think that it's actually quite a good idea that we incorporate talking to all councils again at the point of determining the objections, uh, and I think it's something I'd like to incorporate. Alison, do you want to come back on the first two at least? Yeah, I think um, the, the strategy itself has got a vision, and in that vision there's the, the reasonings and why we do these things. And the, the benefits are set out in the appendices, um, and there are threads around the airport in pollution, but there's no specific policies. Now, if the committee was minded to make those changes, to put those recommendations into the report, um, I'm happy to consider those specific changes. Um, we can deal with those at the next drafting stage. What I'm a little bit of a I would need some qualification at whether or not we could do those um, changes out cycle and get approval um, that, that way so we can speed up the process of um, the drafting and getting, getting the decision. Um, in terms of dealing with some specifics about, um, for instance, the tree planting and make sure we're actually achieving those targets, the, a lot of the data is, is based on um, aerial photographs. And it's a study that's relatively inexpensive to do, so you can actually measure step changes by photograph and working out the canopy cover based on tile portals and it's really well with it. But I can give you the detail if you need it. And we could probably look at doing that as an action, creating an action in the action plan in part three, is to review that in five just to see how we come, where we are in terms of our journey. So that would be an action in part three. With regards to the um, the, the statutory consultations for conservation areas. 
the requirement is to, to consult continuous properties, properties that butt into each other. Um, we did do that, and we go beyond that. We have 700 applications approximately a year. Each one can generate up to 20 to 30 letters. We get very little response for those letters. In fact, 1%, and very often, those are in favour. So, I think we have discussed um, about how we validate applications and determining which ones are likely to have a, a significant immunity impact and we probably would extend beyond what we require to do which would to use properties. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's really close. Um, yeah, I'd be very happy with the airport to do it after the cycle. I mean, I think we've got this kind of initial cycle. It's good that you do the green strategy. But just bringing them up to the I'm only actually about a five-year review, I guess. <laughs> Should we come back to you in that? Yeah. Should we talk about our cycle because we can work it in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in and work cycle. Yeah. And as I say, I think the consultation, I think it relies. I think the way it's drafted, the way it's drafted relies on a very judicious approach, but but by the officers. So if you really can make sure that happens, then. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Um, it's just an issue about the um, in the conservation area. I've been informed that sometimes it takes a long time to actually get the um, process through and accepted. And there were a couple of occasions where by the time it came through, there was a conflict between the tree actually being pruned and the wildlife because it was in the bird nesting mm -hmm. period. And I think we need to somewhere in that have that clear about. Yeah, I'll just answer that question. Um, with, with a conservation area work notice, um, council um, has six weeks to determine whether or not it wishes to protect the tree and it's protect its immunity. So within that time, we've got we've got to make either make a decision to allow the work or issue a TPO. If we haven't made a decision that time, work can, work can happen. As a, as a general rule, um, we put informatives on our decisions, which remind people of the, commit, the, the requirement to remain within wildlife countryside act and not to do work within nesting birds. So there was a few informed us, but uh, getting consent, owner consent, and um, dealing with uh, nesting birds. Thank you, Alison. Yeah, I think it's just recognising that the process actually takes a lot longer than that because a number of tree surgeons won't actually take on the work until there's been an acceptance. Not. So from you know you are the, the permission here is the process, but it's only part of the process. So comment further on this I think we just need to clarify that um, after six weeks you do have deep consent. So the work can happen after six weeks. There's no decision we made. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so we'll move to recommendations on page. Uh, 196 um, approved papers. Um, and the recommendation is A, approve the strategy, and B, instruct the heads of streets and open space to create an action plan, brackets part three, on how to achieve the stated ob objectives, targets, and outcomes. So, um, those in favour of the And accept. Thank you. Okay, so um, so now we're on the, the final item, which is um, item twelve. <coughs>